A woman who responded to an online request for a babysitter told her roommate that the person who placed the ad seems kind of weird. Catherine and Olson went anyway, thinking she would meet a woman named Amy, or a couple. Instead, authorities say, she was lured to the home of her killer, who shot her in the back before stuffing her into the trunk of her car. On Tuesday, prosecutors charged Michael John Anderson, 19, of Savage, with second-degree murder. Their evidence, bloodstains in the suburban home he shared with his parents, a gun in his bedroom, drag marks on the stairs. Olson's body was found Friday in the trunk of her car, which had been left in a park five blocks from Anderson's home. Her ankles were bound with red strings, according to the criminal complaint filed in Scott County. A woman who responded to an online request for a babysitter told her roommate that the person who placed the ad seems kind of weird. Catherine and Olson went anyway, thinking she would meet a woman named Amy, or a couple. Instead, authorities say, she was lured to the home of her killer, who shot her in the back before stuffing her into the trunk of her car. On Tuesday, prosecutors charged Michael John Anderson, 19, of Savage, with second-degree murder. Their evidence, bloodstains in the suburban home he shared with his parents, a gun in his bedroom, drag marks on the stairs. Olson's body was found Friday in the trunk of her car, which had been left in a park five blocks from Anderson's home. Her ankles were bound with red strings, according to the criminal complaint filed in Scott County. Their investigation led them to the house where Anderson lived with his parents. Police found bloodstains in several locations in the house, including on the stairs. In Anderson's bedroom, authorities found a handgun and a shell casing, as well as blood on the walls and on the mattress, the criminal complaint said. A neighbor saw Olson's car sitting in front of Anderson's home for more than two hours on Thursday, the complaint said. Anderson was arrested in Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, where it refuels aircraft. He has been in the Scott County Jail since his arrest late Friday. Bail was set at $1 million. Anderson first told police he had nothing to do with the murder and denied making phone contact with Olson. But cell phone records indicated Olson called Anderson Thursday morning, court documents said. He also said he had not used Craigslist since January, even though the email address in the ad matched his own. He told police that his mother and three friends had access to the account. When Anderson was confronted with the evidence, he changed his story. According to the complaint, he said he was present during Olson's murder but that the killing was committed by a friend who thought it would be funny. Olson graduated in 2002 from Park High School in Cottage Grove, where she was valedictorian. She graduated from Street Olaf College in 2006. Her family posted a message on Facebook, saying Olson had used Craigslist in the past to find kindred spirits and opportunities. The family letter also said Olson loved children and was involved in the church choir, a women's group and numerous outreach activities. Susan McTavish Best, a Craigslist spokeswoman, said Olson's killing was the first the company had seen in its 12-year history. She said it was important for people to be careful whether you are responding to an ad in your local weekly newspaper, on a bulletin board at your gym, or on an online bulletin board. McTavish Best said Craigslist does not monitor each individual listing or user, but is self-monitored by its community. Users can register complaints or report suspicious posts, and Craigslist staff can ban users from the site if they violate the terms of use. Random acts of violence like this cannot necessarily be informed by what appears to be an honest declaration, she said in an email. However, there is still a risk. In California, a 19-year-old college student disappeared in June after meeting a convicted sex offender on Craigslist. In Philadelphia, a man was accused of raping seven women, six of whom he met through the dating site Match.com. He was convicted this summer of two counts of sexual assault, but acquitted of other rape charges.